Sustainable design is not new, and New Mexico is blessed with an unusual concentration of sustainable precedents. The oldest and most famous is Chaco Canyon. During the booming period of construction there from 1100 to 1400, a responsive building strategy was utilized. Here, looking at Pueblo Benito, one can see how all the design responses are geared towards the climate of the southwest. Southern orientation is maximized, the developments are compact and dense, and the construction methods show an adaptability and flexibility over time. You can see at least three floor levels in this interior room at Pueblo Benito, and there is some evidence that the structure may have had as many as five stories. The density helped the construction achieve excellent thermal properties. This video will provide an overview of sustainable design principles for building in Crown Point, New Mexico. It will outline strategies for gathering and moderating wind, sun, and water. It will touch upon adaptability, life cycle, and lead before offering design recommendations in the conclusion. Wind is the critical design consideration for building in Crown Point, as there are frequent winds of 10 to 20 miles per hour, particularly in the spring and fall. Wind generally comes from the west, however the direction is variable depending on the topography of a specific site. There are many design opportunities offered by wind. In Crown Point, because there are significantly more heating days than cooling days, blocking the wind in the winter is more critical than allowing wind for cooling in the summer. This diagram shows the optimal distance for windscreens. As well, walls need to be at least five feet tall to block blowing sand, but slightly higher to block all wind for outdoor spaces. Natural cross ventilation can be a very effective method of cooling. Adding clear stories, having under slab ventilation, or using roof vents to generate stack effect can improve efficiency. Ventilating the airspaces above and below the living area is also an effective method for cooling, though it is a more standard application in hot and humid climates, not arid climates like Crown Point. Earth to air heat exchangers also known as ground coupled heat exchangers, work by capturing the moderate air from the foundation and pushing that air through the building to cool. Earth tubes, underground tubes containing air, water, or solutions, are very effective at gathering cool air since the temperature a few feet underground stays a constant cool temperature. When moderating wind, less dense materials such as bushes or trees can provide the same wind protection as a solid wind barrier. Courtyards, however, offer much more complete protection from the wind, though the length of the courtyard must be less than twice the height for this total protection. It's important to provide winter sunlight into these courtyards, as sunny, wind-protected outdoor areas are all but compulsory for any good design in Crown Point. Natural ventilation is good, but it can be difficult to stimulate air to move quickly through a space. The use of a fan or other electricity-driven systems can greatly increase ventilation. Preheating the air with a heat exchanger from a radiant source as it enters the building, for instance, can significantly reduce heating loads. Wind energy is an important consideration in New Mexico. Unfortunately, the northwest of the state does not receive the sustained winds required for commercial energy production. Wind-powered water pumps, however, can be very effective as they require less speed than turbines. But the windmill does need to be located directly on top of the well. The sun. Crown Point is sunny, with many days requiring heating. Though there are 300 plus days of sunshine in Crown Point, the town is in the thermal comfort zone on the psychometric chart only 3.5% of the time. It's below freezing almost twice as often as it is above 75 degrees. These factors mean that a design in Crown Point must consider how to take advantage of direct and indirect solar gain. The design question is how to capture solar energy in the winter, protect from summer sun and its unwanted heat gain, while capturing daylight year-round. The diagram shows how a small overhang will let in that lower winter sun while blocking the sun in the summer. Maximizing southern exposure is always important in architecture 
as it is the most controllable facade for shading. Buildings do not have to face due south, but orientation should be within 30 degrees of true south, and the south facade should be free of obstructions. For greatest efficiency of solar gain in southern facades, the ratio of glazing to exposed floors should be about 1 to 5. The best methods for climatic design in northern New Mexico are probably the oldest and the simplest. Taos Pueblo's five-story earthen brick structure looks much as it has for centuries and uses its thermal mass well to provide comfort. Acoma Pueblo, located less than 100 miles from Crown Point, is also a great thermal precedent, using its thermal mass successfully to allow for human comfort in all four seasons. A more modern example can be found at the Stock Brand residence by Ed Mazaria. It uses spray insulation on, ex on the exterior of concrete block to keep the solar gains inside at night. Shown here are other examples of the kind of thick-walled form that would be successful at Crown Point. Of course, there are many ways to design for solar performance, from water walls to trom walls and sunrooms. All are effective, but they can be more disruptive to the building's program than direct gain system. Solar performance must be aligned with the program uses of the space. For instance, one wants a computer lab with no direct daylight and glare, but almost everyone prefers their February morning coffee to be in a kitchen flooded with sunlight. Daylighting reduces energy loads and improves health and mood, but it can be tricky to design a sunny space without too much glare. There are many strategies that encourage diffuse daylight, from light shelves to screens to reflected lights. Alvar Aalto's auditorium in Otemi, Finland, has integrated its reflected, diffuse daylighting design into the building's envelope, services, and form. Moderating sun in the summer is necessary. On the south facade, shading strategies can be more diverse, with deep reveals, roof overhangs, louvers, and brisolets all effective methods. On the north facade, vertical fins work, and limited openings may be the best east and west facade strategy. Since heating is more critical than cooling in Crown Point, overhangs should be designed to let in sunlight in the spring. However, that may cause unwanted heat gain in the fall so operable shade should be used. Using water or other solutions to thermally activate surfaces through radiant heating is a very effective means of moderating temperature. These methods address the human body, which responds to radiant heat sources more than it responds to convection heat or blowing air. One method is evacuated solar thermal tubes, which tie photovoltaic panels to piping embedded in floors and walls filled with water or a heat transfer fluid. There are obvious benefits to distilling many systems into fewer, more robust systems. Merging thermal conditioning systems, finished materials, and structural systems all in one. An example of this is the Kunsthof by Peter Zumthor. It represents a radically new concept for conditioning a museum. The thermal conditioning is provided by means of hydronic radiant conditioning. The exterior walls, the floor, and the ceiling slab are all equipped with water-cooled tubes. This reduces the floor-to-floor -floor height as the ductwork is greatly li limited. Active solar systems are a good design idea for Crown Point. The solar exposure is optimal for PV panels. For instance, an array of 10 4 kilowatt panels will generate 69,000 kilowatts of energy over the course of a year, more than enough for three households of four people each. Photovoltaics come in many forms and can have multiple functional purposes. For instance, this PV array near Seattle also works as a shade structure for cars. PVs can come embedded in glass while still offering transparency. But perhaps the most efficient form of PV panels are the ones that tie back into a water loop system, as described in the Kunsthaus. This diagram shows how the process can heat water for home use but it can also be used to heat water for radiant heating and cooling. Water. Crown Point receives 11 inches of rain annually, making water very valuable. But since the water arrives in torrential outbursts, capturing rainwater is also critical to prevent flooding. Currently, Crown Point does not have storm drains 
or a good system for stormwater management, making a strategy all the more critical. The strategy should involve promoting water infiltration and retention while capturing and treating the stormwater. The best strategy for retention involves vegetated infiltration swales or bioswales that retain stormwater while using plants to naturally clean toxins before the water can get to streams. It also can provide a visual amenity and green space. A good example can be found at Navajo Tech and Crown Point. Two other strategies include collecting water from the roof in cisterns and using it for watering. As well, permeable paving materials should be used in the parking lot to increase infiltration and to mitigate stormwater events. Consideration of life cycle costs is particularly critical for any building in Crown Point because of its isolation and its lack of locally available building materials. The Sidwell Friends School by Kieran Timberlake is an example of a building that addresses these sorts of issues. It used over 40,000 board feet of reclaimed wood and received lead platinum. In total, reclaimed materials represented over 9% of the overall material costs and were used in very visible applications such as the facade. You can also see the pervious landscaping elements helping with water retention. This building addresses recycling and design for disassembly as well as integrating systems. The design should also allow for an evolution of uses at the site and offer adaptability for people arriving at the site by providing bus parking and bike racks. By keeping a simplicity of operation in the design while avoiding functional specificity, the building will be able to have a longer life. There are many ways of quantifying one's environmental commitment, none more famous than LEED. LEED has been very successful at publicizing green design and making green a value-added product for clients. But it also commodifies common sense design decisions while creating a complex point system that is sometimes counterintuitive. Its two biggest glitches are bioregional insensitivity and a somewhat vague connection to life cycle cost analysis. There are five sustainable design recommendations for building in Crown Point. One, create a sunny outdoor space protected from westerly winter winds and blowing sand. Two, maximize solar gain in the winter with lots of southern exposure while using short overhangs to shade in the summer. Three, provide as much diffuse year-round daylight as possible. Four, develop a cooling strategy reliant on passive ventilation but adding some amount of mechanical assistance. Combine systems into an integrated system of heating and cooling that may be tied into solar thermal panels. Five, Encourage infiltration with ground porosity. Retain water from stormwater events in cisterns, bioswales, and other methods that allow one to reuse the water. And now I will leave you with the words of Louis Kahn speaking on the importance of green design. The architect must think of his responsibility. His responsibility to create something which is always true to the nature of man and to the laws of nature, and which is conscious of water, of air, of light, of the animal world, and the green world.